expendable. And uh, that was very important because of my belief and the belief of many other people that I have great respect for, uh, that uh, the world is going through a, I'll call it a meltdown. Once the people found out what had been done to them by their representatives, uh, they felt that it would be much better for their health and safety to be somewhere else. In my understanding, it was the third ever closed session of Congress. We found that no matter uh, where the politician was and what committee he was on, when top secret things were talked about, uh, they wanted to close the session early so they could get out and put their tips out to the to the news. So. Uh, we don't have any uh, confidentiality in that, so it, it leaked out, I'm sure. Am I right in assuming that you wouldn't contradict those leaks? I wouldn't contradict them at all. Dr. Pete Peterson, who's a name that not many people will know, but this time. Why is it that you've come forward and you're talking to us now? Well, I think the main reason for that is that uh, I've had an uh, inside insight for many, many years, uh, having been picked up in various programs to do things for the government since I was 13 years old. And uh, being a problem solver, I wish I could... Uh, say that it was hard work and so forth, but I come from a long line of inventors on both sides of my family tree and, and uh, people who graduated from school very early and uh, were significant in uh, affecting things that uh, affected humanity, a number of them in, in virtually uh, every kind of field and uh, uh, climate. and. I see that uh, the world seems to have uh, gone downhill. I'm aware of many programs to uh, remove intelligence from people and uh, return the people, at least of this nation, to a, uh, uh, a mediocre status. Uh, we've watched the school systems deteriorate. Uh, we've watched the, as my wife likes to say, the program in the school systems, uh, no child left with a mind. And I've seen that uh, the type of government we have, though I'm a patriot and I spent 10 years in the Marine Corps, and uh, a great part of that was in combat and combat zones and other uh, things I did for the government. And anyway, what I see happening is a complete turn away from the way this country started out and then its constitution to what appears to be headed toward a, uh, a socialistic system where reason and logic has no, no bearing and uh, it concerns me and I have no idea if my voice can help. Uh, I have no idea if that can but I know that my ideas, I have ideas, I have uh, inventions that have proven to be uh, very helpful to society and many of them have been suppressed by the fact that we had a government that was run by industry rather than by the people and it's turned away from that and many industries are actually governed by rules and regulations that make it virtually impossible for them to exist if they do things that are good for humanity. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, we've had uh, numerous uh, things that happened in the industry of alternative power that were very inexpensive, uh, very capable, but what we do is we've, through their own legislation, limited the power companies to being able to charge uh, a certain amount over and above their costs, so when their costs went down, their profit went down and they couldn't economically operate. Can you give us a little bit of a timeline of your career history, which started when you were very young, um, a little bit about the kind of things you've been involved in? We're not asking you to name names, but we just want to present to you as somebody who people can get some kind of an idea of who this person is that we're talking to 
whose name they haven't heard before. Uh, I have no idea where these thoughts came to me, but I know that very early on in life, uh, I was so different from the people around me that I thought that probably I fell from the sky in a titanium egg and landed in my grandfather's orchard and my parents found me there. And I think you're probably right, actually, <laughs> having so, talked to you for two days. And until I was about 22, I actually believed that. Uh, then I quit believing that when I was in my mid-twenties and in my last few years, uh, I'm nearly 70, and in my last few years I've started believing that again. <laughs> because I find that uh, the people I'm stuck with here on this little spaceship Earth are, uh, uh, don't seem to have the same uh, view. The same view of anything. Mm. And it may be that I'm just wacky. But uh, my wackiness is, uh, has made a lot of products and uh, made a lot of sense to a number of people throughout my life. When, uh, for some reason, I uh, well, probably genetics, because I have on both my both of my parent sides, I have long lines of geniuses that extend back in history. And I grew up in a home that was entirely uh, powered and heated and cooled in a very temperate climate, uh, was powered by uh, the sun and by atmospheric pressure change. Uh, it was a home that had a, uh, a gallery inside of it, much like uh, Mexican haciendas, but was covered where we grow, grew all of our meat product in the form mm -hmm. of chickens and rabbits mm -hmm. and such, and where we grew all of our food products. And uh, we drove in cars that my father made and invented, and we lived in homes that my father uh, built out of strange materials that were very highly insulated. Uh, my dad uh, was a pioneer in tilt-up concrete buildings and and uh, was an engineer for the military when in my youth through Second World War. And, and, go and you were handpicked and chosen for a special program when you were as young as 13. Is this Yes, one? I uh, uh, distinguished myself at age 10 by building a a number of rockets that held altitude records, world altitude records, and uh, by inventing a uh, material that's used even today to power solid fuel rockets. Uh, that material got out of my hands because I'm not a businessman and wasn't a businessman and freely gave it away and other people capitalized on it. But uh, uh, I liked explosions and so early on started building rockets. But we human beings are from ET lineage, are we not? My, my belief is that, uh, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, radiocarbon dating has, has become very, very accurate. And we have uh, very good records of uh, cavemen that didn't have a language. They drew some, some drew pictures, some didn't. Uh, we found caves with their tools in them, with the evidences of their civilization, with their making crude tools and things. Uh, and there have been a number of spots that those were found, especially in Africa and Europe and the Middle East. And then all of a sudden, over an 80-year period, emerged a civilization that for 3,000 years had the same language and the same religion and the same writing and the same mathematics and it was very, very advanced from things that came afterwards. And, uh, you know, in modern history, since, uh, oh, let's say 300 BC, we haven't had any civilization that didn't change the language to where you couldn't read it in the 300-year sure. period. Yeah. 